Hello, my name is Stephen Knight. This is a Trainerscope presentation. Today we're looking at Adobe Lifecycle Designer. This is ES2. What we're going to be looking at, though, will work with ES3 as well. Uh, our topics for today, two simple little lessons on things that people have a bit of trouble with. Uh, topic number one is... Uh, having a table where we can add additional rows to the table so if people need to add so it's an expense claim they need to add additional data we can provide a button for them to do that the second topic of this short tutorial is having optional areas showing and hiding on a form so what we're going to do is have two checkboxes if you click a checkbox uh, an area will appear or not appear depending on what you choose so that's our uh, plan also with this we're not writing any code okay we're going to use a little tool that lifecycle designer es2 and ES3 has that will allow us to pick what we want and it'll it'll write the code for us which makes life a lot easier if you're somebody who needs to use lifecycle designer who's not a coder okay who's somebody that needs to collect data but doesn't want to write the code so let's uh, make a start Now, to keep this tutorial simple, I'm just going to focus on the core skills of the, uh, the process. Uh, there's more that you would do that this tutorial will not cover, like making the flow of your page dynamic rather than positioned, so that as we add more rows in our table, it pushes down the other content. Uh, so that you don't get things overlapping where people add more rows. So that's the subject of another tutorial out of our scope today. So we're not doing any formatting, making this look pretty at all. It's just going to be concentrating on the function. So step one, I'm heading up to the table menu. I'm going to insert a table. Now I want to use the table assistant here because it makes life a bit easier for us. So I use the table assistant. Uh, I'm going to start just with three columns, but you could have more or less if you needed them. Uh, so it's going to the number of rows is going to vary depending on the amount of data. We will take advantage of that where we'll uh, be able to add extra rows. Uh, so I'm just starting with three, as I said, nice and simple. We will have a header row. Uh, we won't have a footer row. Uh, but you could for totals, uh, you could do formulas, which I've covered in a separate tutorial. Uh, let's go next. Uh, now, uh, this is going to just have uh, body rows and no sections. Uh, if you wanted to control the behavior of aspects of the table in more detail, you could have sections here as well, but we won't get that complex. Let's just concentrate on getting it to work. You can also set up alter alternating uh, colors. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying look let's go light yellow and then alternate rows will be white. It makes it easier for people to read if they're entering data, particularly if you've got complex forms. Remembering we're only having three uh, fields in a row. In the real world you can have much more complex forms. So let's go finish and there we go okay now we did get a warning and it's just warning us about spelling you can see that down the bottom here now what I'm also going to do is now open my field panel uh, and say so I love this opening and closing panels just makes life a bit easier we're going to put some headings in here so we're going to have uh, customer ID where people enter in their customer ID they're going to enter uh, a code and we might have them enter a date now let's add some fields in here so what I would like for size in a moment text field excellent notice how that just snaps in there very very nice uh, now we want to put a another text field in here where we want a code and I want a date so we have a date and time field which I'll just drop that in there now 
just while we're on our fields, I can expand and collapse again. So we've got our layout set, we've got the object panel now showing on the left. Uh, we can also expand our hierarchy a little here and we can see now what I've done is and what you can do very easily is right click on each object and choose rename object and I've just given these things uh, sensible names so that we've uh, got them identified. So what we've got now is a table with three fields in the table. Now what we want to do next is get this set up so we have a button that people can click on to add additional rows. So what we need is I need to expand my object panel and in the object library or I'll expand the library panel in the in the object library what I've got here now is a button field so I'm going to grab the button field and drop that in somewhere convenient and now with the button field selected uh, I can give it a caption and the caption might say add more uh, and I'll put a bit of a plus sign with that because people like uh, plus signs in their add buttons you see that a lot so we've got a button uh, we now want to attach some code to this button so that when people click on it, it adds extra rows. So I'm going to go up to add, well I've got the button selected, I'm going up to tools, I'm going to the action builder. Now this is the functionality where if we use the action builder, we don't need to write the code. I'm going to click on the add new action. I'm then going to say when an object's clicked, so when object uh, and I need to choose my button and so when button 1 is clicked we're going to do something and you'll see there's all sorts of things we can do here the show hide object is the second one we're going to use in the next exercise let's add a new object we then need to select what object that is that we want it to create and I'm saying give me a new another row copy of row 1 if I then go OK now that's written for me up here you'll notice some nice JavaScript designed to run in the client uh, where it basically does all the hard work and has written the code for me so and you'll notice it's running at the client you've got options uh, for other possibilities although for this you'll notice form calc is grayed out in one of my other tutorials I've used form calc for adding up fields it doesn't really do this level of interactivity you must use JavaScript for that so we've got JavaScript running at the client meaning it'll run not on the server side but in the browser or on the PC of our end user now let's test this out if I now go to preview then we see a preview this is Acrobat Reader that it's actually borrowing here uh, and I can click add more and because we specified alternate row shading you'll notice it's respecting that and I'm getting my different rows and I'm getting my date pickers for each row uh, and so on so we've got a fully functioning uh, multi row table where we can have as many rows as we need Again, you'd add to this dynamic uh, flow so that objects move down the page to make room for this, and Lifecycle Designer can do that. Uh, what we're going to do next is look at switching sections on or off in our form uh, for purposes of having optional areas that we might need people to fill in. So thank you for your attention, and we'll just have a quick word from our sponsor before we do the next bit. So please come back after the after the break. Okay, so we're back. What I've done to sort of set the stage for us is from the object library, I've dropped in a couple of checkboxes, and from the custom library, I've dragged in a couple of address boxes, uh, or address blocks, sorry, and some text to just label these as address and postal and in the first checkbox here I'm just going to double click in here and we might say street and 
postal and I'll just relabel this one because I really meant this to say street just noticed my mistake now what I'm also going to do is over here I can rename my my objects and I might call this street again renaming I know that's just gone off screen uh, and we'll call the second one postal now second thing I'm going to do here is select the street block and I'm going to turn this into a little sub form so you'll notice in the shortcut menu I've just right clicked inside the selected area I'm going to wrap in a sub form and the same for postal so I'll just select that using the marquee effect right click rabbit in a subform and I can give these subforms a name uh, and again I'll rename the object so this first one is the street form and the second one down here is the address form. Uh, actually, sorry, it's the postal form. Okay, done and done. So with these, I'm now going to bring my object properties back up because I want street form to start as invisible or actually hidden where it can even exclude it from the layout but we'll start with it invisible or you could go hidden exclude it from layout and I'll do the same with the postal form and hidden and exclude from layout again with this you will recall earlier I said you would make your page a dynamic uh, form rather than uh, static positioning so what we're going to do now is up here on street and I'll just collapse a few things so we get a bit better view of this so there's our little street field and we're heading back up to tools and the action builder and I'm going to say look when a particular object oh, sorry I'm heading up I'm heading up to the tools menu I've got the street field selected I'm going to action builder I'm going to build a new action and what I'm going to do here is select an object and that's going to be the street object and I don't want that just to trigger when it's clicked it needs to be checked we need people to tick the box because it might get clicked on by text-to-speech readers or other devices as people tab through the form for example now the result is we want to show and hide an area and we need to nominate what the object is and I want, just coming down, the street form object to be set to visible. Now I would look at in practice adding another one, another action that says when the street is cleared as in is not checked set it to uh, hidden again. So we'll go OK there. Let's repeat the process. I'm going to select Postal. I'm going to go up to Tools. I'm going to choose the Action Builder. I'm going to say New Action. And when the object is selected, and I'm going to say when the Postal object is checked. And the result I want from that is to show and hide an object. I'm just to choose that again and I have to nominate the object which is going to be my postal area and I want that block to be set to visible so you can see the potential for doing the reverse so if somebody clears something you want it to remove an area of the form and if you're using your dynamic uh, layout then uh, everything will move up and down accordingly uh, let's go OK now let's save again you'll notice it's written a whole pile of JavaScript for us there it is there well it's only two lines of code but we didn't need to learn to write that 
it's done the hard work for us. I'm going to preview my PDF and ticking the appropriate checkboxes. You'll notice those two areas. have appeared. Now I need the converse code to remove them. You now know how to do that yourself. So thank you for your patience with this tutorial. It has been a little bit rough in places uh, because usually these things are developed very very quickly so thank you for your understanding and also I had a few weird things happen while I was trying to record it. Uh, just a tip when you go to preview something in Lifecycle Designer, because it's firing up Acrobat Reader as part of that to do the preview, when it does that, it might run the accessibility wizard. Do pay attention to that, folks, because uh, it ran it while I was recording, and some of the settings I picked screwed up the uh, previewing process. Uh, so just be very careful. Uh, I'm not saying the accessibility features aren't very useful. They are. Uh, but you want to control uh, what's actually happening a little bit more. Uh, so do watch your answers there or cancel that wizard. Otherwise, you'll spend a bit of time unraveling some of its settings to suit what we're doing. So more later. I'm hoping you found that useful. My apologies for the fact that it's a little bit rough in places. Also, the audio quality is a little bit funny as well. I've just moved to Windows 8 and Captivate on Windows 8. It's setting the uh, volume level a little bit lower than it should be. Uh, so, thank you for your patience. Enough of my apologies. I'm hoping you found that useful. Uh, my name is Stephen Knight. Come back again.